minus 20 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking another look at our ongoing saga of the uh, of the Voron V0.1. So, when we picked up last time, um, we could not, I'd say we, I couldn't, get the uh, get Clipper or the Pi to talk directly to the uh, to the E three board that's 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 in here, and as you can see, despite the fact that this machine is on, I'm holding an Ender three E three board. So um, I'm ninety nine percent confident that this board is faulty. Um, so uh, basically, you can flash firmware. The SD card works and uh, the board powers on, and it would appear that it gives temperature readouts and all of that good stuff. But when you use the USB port, it is dead. So it doesn't connect to the Pi, it doesn't connect to the PC, and as soon as I change the board, I put in exactly the same firmware as last time, and the board immediately connected. And we now have a main cell configuration we now have a uh, we now have this thing uh connected to clipper which is brilliant and we are just starting to take a look at some of the configuration um we are having a couple of issues just off the bat <laughs> it wouldn't be one of our streams if we didn't so let's just take a look and see who's with us at the moment. So hi, George's Gaming Guides. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hi, Andrew. So James looked at the board and it broke. Do you know what, Carl? I wouldn't even be shocked if that were the case. I wouldn't even be surprised if that was it. This came out of a fresh box. So to be fair, although this is a Blue Rolls kit, um, this board came in a sealed Big Tree Tech box. And bag, and, and it was all vacuum. It was still in its bag and everything else. Look at mobile, <laughs> a mobile USB here and a black T-shirt. Thanks, Kieran. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, this doesn't work, and that's all that really matters. <laughs> so um, I have just realised a very stupid mistake that I made mere moments ago. So. I was wondering why my X and Y weren't working properly, and that's because I have switched my X and my Z, not my X and my Y, because I am just an asset. So the first thing we're trying to do um, is literally get the machine to home, right? It's the first step in any. It's the first step in uh, in configuring this to make sure that it works. Sell it on eBay with no returns. <laughs> I think, to be honest, it's just going to go in the bin. I probably could use it on another machine. In so much as, um, if I didn't need the USB, you don't need the USB to flash it. So you could technically, I could technically use it on another machine. Um, I'm not going to use it on another machine. I've, I've I've literally got I've literally got no use for it at all, so uh, so that's that's a bin job. So um, so yeah, so the new the new board is now in here, and uh, we are now taking a look at everything that we need to change. So my first concern is that the tool, the hot end is reporting a hundred and thirty degrees at the moment. And I guarantee you that it isn't because I can touch it and it's not warm. So that says to me that we have more than likely uh, either got the, we either have a damaged sensor, which is possible, or we have, um, or we have a, 
I have on Clipper for my end of seven. Uh, yeah, so uh, we either have a bad sensor or we have the sensor defined incorrectly in Clipper. So um, what I will do is I will... Can I share my screen? Oh, I'll have to do it that way, won't I? Oh, hold on. I will share my screen so you can see what we're working on at the moment. There we go. So this is Clipper. Clipper is working, um, as you can as you can see. So we can go up here, and you can see that although my extruder is currently reporting at 129 degrees, and it absolutely isn't, the bed is reporting at 27, and that is correct. So let's try homing. X is moving in the wrong direction, which is just swell. So stop that. Restart. Machine here. Right, so. X is moving in the wrong direction. Let's try that again. So that now restarts. Yeah, cool. So that's now homing Y first, which means what I did was wrong. Oh, I do so love these machines. <laughs> so that goes like that, and that comes out. Start. Let's try again. Well, that's very annoying. So now, <laughs> oh, fun, 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 fun. So if we look in here, there is actually a thing that says if it is moving in the wrong direction, we can check here. We should be able to figure out what is going on. So save and restart that. Let's see what happens now. X moves in the correct direction. Yes. Y moves in the correct direction. See, I didn't even need to type anything. I just need to open that page. <laughs> well, the good news is, is that X seems to be having enough of an issue moving. So why aren't you... Okay, so I think we need to take a look at what voltage we are putting at Z because that was really struggling. So, The V0.1 spec, LDOs is one. This is an LDO motor kit, so that should fix that, I guess. Let's find out. Go back to dashboard. Why are you struggling? What is that about? We just need to loop the... Um... Where's my yeah, I'm not bad, Carl. Mike, do you want to uh, show them what you've been working on recently whilst I try and find where I put my lithium-ion grease? So, uh... Hold on, let me make you big before I jump off. Uh, where are you? There you are. There so I think the last time we'd done a live stream, I was sort of halfway through printing. Mike? 
Mike is now done. With Honey Badger T-shirt as well. And a working watch as well, which is pretty cool. So I don't think the likeness is too bad if I actually bother to do it. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, what I'm going to do with it, I don't rightly know. Um, the only practical use I can think for it is to, um, when my mother-in-law comes to stay, stand stand in her bedroom facing her, so it just looks at her all night. That's that's the only reason. That's the only use I can think of it, really. Arif, uh, I don't know if Arif's on here, but Arif did say I should put a lampshade on his head and just use it as a lamp. <laughs> Which seems a bit uh, self-involved. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why he, why he suddenly came up with lamp. Like that was his go-to use for it. So it doesn't mind moving down, but as soon as you try to tell it to move up, doesn't like that. What's going on there then? Cool idea. Bloody creepy as well as I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. I might do a raffle amongst all my friends and then whoever wins has to keep it. <laughs> Is that a win? Well, for me, because like, they'd have to have it because it's a present. So down it moves fine. If I did that cold, by the time I come home, my dog would have just licked all the paint clean off it. Some of them, yeah, Kieran, yeah. So you hate your friends that much? Yeah, he does, actually. I can, I can vouch for that. So I'm just trying to figure out why... No, I, if I move him over, he just peers into the corner of the screen. <laughs> yeah, that is... That is sinister. How much paint That's did you get in your mouth while doing him? <laughs> it was actually a right pain to paint because it was so tall. Yeah, I can imagine. When I did the face, I stood stood him on the floor. Right. <laughs> right. I think James does secretly want it. But I also feel now that James should go and get scanned and do one of himself. I don't really know if I'm that much of a narcissist. Yeah, I think you should do it. George's gaming guide has been saying we should you should go and get it done. I am not loving this Z axis at the moment. Like the movement is I think I have just found the only use for it, and that is just to peer into the corner of my screen when I'm on li like live stream. It appears to be its only use. I would agree with that. <clears throat> trying to figure out what's struggling here. I don't know if I would annoy people with it as gifts, Cole, because it took me two weeks to print. <laughs> right. It's a lot just to keep doing them to give away as gifts. <laughs> I, I don't really like that many people that much. That's although very do, true. Although I do hate people that much. That is very true. This Z movement is not good. Down is fine. But up. It's just struggling. Like it's like it's not powerful enough. 
let's just have a look at making sure that's the stepper motor. Yeah, Kieran, a uh, lot of my friends would test it to destruction. They would probably just beat the piss out of it as soon as I gave it to them. I could test that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at it, James. <laughs> I wonder if stealth chops enabled. How do you take stealth chop off? Um, what's stealth chop? Stealth chop is a um. It's a feature on 2209 TMC drivers. Um, and it, it's supposed to make your... Um, it's supposed to... Uh, it's supposed to make your stepper drivers really quiet. But what it invariably does is it turns down the voltage and it causes issues. I'm just looking to see stealth chop threshold. So can we not just take that out? Can you show your scan? That looks really cool. Oh, Jerry's just joined us, wants to see the scan. Stroke it nicely. It might work for you. I highly doubt that. It's never worked for me in the past. I want to be clear that the last time this didn't work, it wasn't my fault. The board was broken. <laughs> The board was broken. Like, it's not me. Sounds I didn't do like, that. Sounds a bit like it was your fault, though. Well, it wasn't. So everyone can stop saying that it was. Right. So I wonder if we can just comment that out then. Uh, oh, there we go. Try that. See if that works. We're going to need to figure out why that... Um, Yeah, there we go. Right, so I've disabled Stealth Chop, and I rather suspect I need to do that for the other um, motors as well. Stealth Chop threshold gone. Right, saving there. Unfortunately, Carl, because uh, James set up the uh, stream, uh, is the only one who can create the polls. I need to create a poll, do I? How the, how the hell do you do that? Ask George's gaming guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems fair. Is there a way to create polls? Hold on. Right, cancel that. Remove that. Oh, it's on YouTube. You do it. Oh, I, oh, well, yeah. I was supposed to know that, was I? That's only because I've just looked. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> do it on. Do it on that then. I found something technical that you didn't know. Well, I mean, it wasn't where. Well, okay, whatever. <laughs> right, X, Y, and Z are now homing. This is good. So, perfect. Okay, and then we go. Add twenty-five. Minus 25. Yes, good. Okay, perfect. So, the next thing we need to figure out... Oh. That's a lot of fun noise, isn't it? 
I think I might have done those belts a bit too tight. They are struggling to move. Come on. It's all about the theory on how you or stroking it, make it change size. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Hi, yeah, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. You're all right. So, right. Okay. So, movement speeds are not what they should be. I think we've got our movement speed too high. So. People seem to think it was your fault that the uh, fault and broke. people are fully entitled to their opinion. People have been wrong for years. Why don't you change the screens over so people can actually see what's happening on the uh, printer? Yeah, hold on. Right. So, what we're doing at the moment, guys, is I'm just trying to get this to move properly, and at the moment, really making a nasty grinding noise but what's weird is it okay maybe it's i shouldn't have the end. Oh, that's worse don't even know what that's trying to um trigger now i didn't vote was not here <laughs> Definitely not the noise that should be making. Well, the good news is Z homes properly now. Bad news is nothing else does. So let's re enable stealth chop for X and Y. Yeah, all I'm trying to do, guys, I'm just trying to figure out what needs to be changed across these um across these clipper settings to get this moving properly because at the moment it it isn't so if we home all which it does perfect right and now Oh, oh, so close. So Y is working perfectly, but X now isn't. That's unfortunate, isn't it? Well, you're now at two out of three. We're getting there. It's progress. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to argue with that. It's just not necessarily, uh, you know, done. Complete progress. Yeah. Try again. Go back to here. Home all. See, X moves nicely when it's homing. Z now moves brilliantly. It's not the speed at which it's moving, is it? Well, I mean, it could... Oh, I fixed it! It was just where it was moving, I think. I think it might have been the... Uh, I think it might have been the cable chain. I still think the cable chain's a little bit too long, so we might have to try and um, get a couple of links out of that so that it doesn't um, so that it doesn't catch. Because if we move that cable chain out, it shouldn't be the it shouldn't be the speed that it's moving. Because you've got to bear in mind how fast this thing can move, and it's going nowhere near that speed at the moment.
See, that's almost like something is catching and it's causing the belts to slip. So what would that be? So, right, so if we now go... So where would that be catching then? I don't see anything around there. Just looking to see if there's somewhere obvious that the belts are the belts are sort of catching something or moving something that they shouldn't be. I don't think there is. Could it just be that we need to add a little bit of lubrication? Let's <coughs> try home in. Hey, homing works nice and smooth. Okay, right. So let's try and now figure out why. Why we have an issue on the. Uh, why we have an issue on this. Or no crunchy noise there. No crunchy noise there. Oh. Rude. When in doubt, lubricate. Right, okay, let's have a little look then. So the question now on my mind is why Okay, cool, so that's working, so that must have been something that was catching. Why is the temperature sensor reading out like that? So let me go and get a spare, swap it over and see whether or not we've got Sounds like it's only crunching on both and X, Y move. Yeah, Paul, I mean, the problem is, is that, I mean, the problem is, 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 is there an X and Y move? I suppose if I, because if I, I think I might have fixed it now anyway. I think it was, I think it was a belt somewhere that was catching. So if we move, yeah, no, it's fine now. I think it was uh, either something was catching on the belts as in a bit of grit or something was just not lubricated properly, but it's working now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and grab another temperature sensor. And I'm going to plug that in and I'm just going to see whether or not the reason I'm getting a temperature readout is because my thermistor is setting correctly or whether or not it's actually the thermistor that's the issue. So, bear me one second. So, what's everyone printing at the minute? I've, I've been sent a load of Sunlu filament from Sunlu. So, I'm printing, I don't know if you've seen it, the Gambody um, Russell Crowe Gladiator. I'm printing that using the Sunlu filament. Um, what I'm a little bit gutted about is we found another model on Gambody, a new one, which is excellent, and I would have rather have done that. 
but I'm um, sort of four days into doing the base, so um, I'm not just stopping that. But um, Gambody, once they've had a few new models come out, one of them is a Voldemort from Harry Potter. That's an excellent model. Um, if you have a look on there as well, since the last time I've been on there, they've actually had a lot, a lot of new models. There's one which is a Chevy Impala. It's from um, Supernatural, I think, television program. Um, that model is unbelievable. Um, everything on the car works. Um, have a look at it and look at the details in that model. Um, we've potentially got a very big resin printer on the way. Um, so I'm going to wait for that because I want the bodywork to be smooth as possible before I like at least with resin, you're 90% of the way there. A little bit of sanding, maybe a little bit of smoothing, but um, with FDM, you know you're going to spend hours and hours on that bodywork, getting it completely smooth, and I don't want to do that. So hopefully when we get this resin printer, some of that will go on now. Um, how big is it? I think that car was, was it? 700 mil long was it 500 mil yeah your mic's not working james there we go can you hear me yeah that's it yeah right so it was uh it was 630 mil long and i think it was about 250 mil wide something like that yeah and it was like the 150 mil pulp. high or something. Yeah, so pulp, no. So we have tried and we've had conversations with Eligu about whether or not they'll give us one. Um, they aren't. Uh, so the one, the, the, the big printer that we're hoping to get our hands on is the, uh, where are we? There we go. Uh, is the, um, is we've, you've, you've probably seen a couple of our videos with Photocentric. Um, Photocentric have a new machine they've brought out called the Opus. Um, <coughs> it's uh, it's a thirteen point five inch, is it, Mike? I think it's a thirteen and a half inch screen. Yeah, I think so. So I think it's so. um it's a, it's a it's a big machine, like it like it's a good size. Um, and we've got we've got plans. So um, so there's. In the first You've got instance, model you the, want to do. You've got a model you want to do, and I've got one I want to do. Yeah, yeah. The model I want to do is a uh, high DP DB 3D. Dan, Jesus, that's a mouthful, isn't it? DB 3D Dan. There we go. There we go. Uh, the three liter tank. No, Paul. So, so, um, so the three liter tank one is the Magna, yeah. and the Magna is a 24 inch screen. And we just because to... neither one of us have got any space to put that printer. No, We've that's probably very true. fine space, but we haven't got it at the minute. Yeah, so um, we had a conversation with Photocentric about whether or not they'd give us one of the, the Magnus. They did point out that it's a £17,000 industrial machine. We didn't seem we... to, that didn't bother us. It, that barely even faced us. We said, you know what, we're willing to take on the challenge. And they laughed for six minutes and then they asked us to leave. So, um, so. <laughs> So we're not getting we're not getting that one. I know that much. Uh, but uh, but I mean the mag the Magna is 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 giant. It's a really it's a really big machine. So we're hopefully getting sort of the next best thing, which uh, which which should be the um, which should be the Opus, which is the machine. It's like the second version of they had a machine called the Dental. Yeah, and Back, let me just. Aimed at dentists, it's a you know, but they've sort of done a second iteration of it. And instead of aiming it at dentists solely with a name like the dental, it's now they're aiming it at everybody, yeah. So let me just have a look at their machines. Where are they? So, printers. So the issue as well with their um, with their Magna and their larger printers is um, is that they use daylight resin. 
The Opus, which is their new one, uh, uses regular, regular UV resin. So, yes, yeah, so the dimensions on the Opus, so it is a little shorter than the, um, than the, um, it is a little shorter than the Anycubic Mega because the build volume on this is 310 by 174 by 220, which is still, I want to be clear, a very impressive size, but it is a little bit small. I think it's a little shorter than the, than the Anycubic Mega is. I think the Mega is a little taller than that. I think, I think the photocentric printers just look cooler though. Yeah, I mean the photocentric printers are very reminiscent of uh, of the Form Labs machines. Yeah, it's uh, it's very uh, it's very very reminiscent of sort of the the Form Labs L and things like that. Um, I mean it's a premium machine. There's no two ways. There's no two ways about it, right? Um, it comes with a hefty price tag and all. Oh, is it not any cubic? Sorry, it's the Frozone Mega, isn't it? Apologies. The mighty 8K thing. Got the Frozone. Oh, yes, the Frozone, sorry. So hold on. So the Frozone's build volume is. Yeah, it's 400 on the Z for the. Um, for the for the Frozone. The Frozone is 330 by 1850 by 400 and the opus is 310 by 174 oh so it's a 12 and a half inch screen sorry not a 13 and a half inch screen i think but there is a very different price tag between the photocentric and the uh the frozen yeah so the frozen 8k i think now is up for i think the regular retail price is is it like is it like 800 no i can't remember how much the retail price for the um for the frozone is i know that i, I remember that it was like 600 for the early bird i can't it's remember under if thousand, it, it's under a thousand i'm pretty sure two grand is it really two grand for the frozone mega Jesus. Or do you mean it? Yeah, you must. Yeah, really? Wow. Oh, two thousand dollars. OK, so about seventeen hundred pounds. OK, fair enough. Um, I'm just looking at the. I'm just looking at the speed, if it says what speed this prints at. So this prints at 18 millimeters an hour, whereas the, the Frozone prints at, at 70 millimeters an hour. Cure speed is two seconds per layer. I don't know what it goes down to for them, but the Z, yeah, the Z axis is double. You get double the Z axis on the Frozone. But anyway, so, so two grand, let's say, for the, uh, for the Frozone. But the uh, and that doesn't include import tax. No, you're right. It doesn't. I mean, the import tax is the VAT. So 20 percent. Um, and it's an 8K. It's an 8K machine. Um, the Opus is not an 8K. It's a 4K, if I remember rightly. Um, I'm not sure if it says here. One second. Does it say what it is? I'm pretty sure it's a 4K machine. 4K screen light. Yeah, it's a 14. Oh, it's a 14 inch monochrome 4K LCD. There you go. And then the the Opus, if I remember rightly, is priced at around five grand. It's not a cheap machine, guys. Do you know what I mean? But then it's not really targeted at the pub. It's not really targeted it's not, at the hobby it's, market. No, it's not. It's, uh, you know, it's it's a dental and entry level industrial machine. So you've got to think of it more on um, more on par with uh, something like an Ultimaker or even the Form Labs machines. So the Form Labs machines are still like three, four grand, and they're a and they're half the uh, they're half the size of these, uh, or not even a half. They're a third of the size of these machines. 
So I've plugged in um, I've plugged in a new temperature sensor and the new temperature sensor is giving the correct readout. So it's not my firmware. It's the thermistor that's in here. I'm also conscious that neither of my park cooling fans are working and I've had to order new ones of those. So I'm tempted to say that we may call it a night on this stream for this one because even if I dismantle this hot end and I run the new temperature sensor, I'm still going to have to dismantle it again to run the two um, to run the two park cooling fans when they when they turn up tomorrow. So I'm tempted to say that what we'll do is we'll end the stream for tonight um, early than I wanted to. I appreciate and I apologise about that, guys. Maybe um, do another one Thursday or something once we've installed the new. Yeah, once we've installed the new stuff, then we can take a look at we can take a look at finishing that off. However, before before we go, there is something that we have coming. So this is an end of three. And as you can see, apart from the fact that it's got the vapor smooth bed from the Quinley, this is a stock machine. We don't like stock machines. We especially don't uh, like stock enders. So we are going to be doing a linear rail upgrade. Unfortunately, the company that we're working with didn't send us the linear rails. They sent us all so, the parts. All the parts. All the parts. Yeah. I've got all the, I've got the brackets, got all the tall head mounts, got all the, uh, got all the bed mount pieces. Um, it's not an IDEX, Carl. It's still single extruder and everything else. It's just linear rails for all of it. Um, but, yeah, they didn't send us the, um, they didn't send us the, uh, the linear rails. So it's a little tricky to do the linear rail upgrade without the linear rails. I'll admit it's not ideal. So, and then, um, that, then that printer is going to take on a third iteration because yes, it is. I'm hoping so, maybe tomorrow, maybe Thursday, we are getting the print mill conversion kit for an end of three. So we, we reached out to this company to um to talk to them and i want to be very clear about this we reached out to them almost specifically to throw this in non-stick's face um so non-stick uh, has the cr30 i think if i recall correctly it took you the best part of eight months to build because of how long it sat in the box um so uh so we are getting the end of three conversion kit so the kit actually is surprisingly not that expensive and it's all so, um, it's all metal parts as well it is all metal parts yeah um so um if i remember rightly uh can you remember how much it actually cost? is it like 700 it's, it, it's usually 350 dollars but because this is their first shipment of them, it's three hundred and twenty dollars. Three hundred and twenty dollars. So three hundred and twenty dollars. Now, to be clear, um, you need to, um, you still need to uh, pay have an import, import charge, and you'll still have a shipping fee on top of that. Um, but and you'd still need to buy an end of three if you don't already have one. But even after all that. You're still, still going to probably come in under six hundred pounds, and what you will have at the end is effectively identical, if not. Oh my god, there's a bug! Yeah, You've just been attacked by Daddy Longlegs. I, I've killed it. It's dead. Oh, it's alive. That's no, not well. I I stunned it, and that's what's important. Uh, so, <laughs> so I will send you the link, Carl. Uh, uh, we have to find it first, but it's from a company in Peru. They're shipping out of uh, they're shipping out of China. The machine, it's so you'd have to have an end of three to start this with. Is, this has sort of been in the works for about two months now. It's been in the works been for a while. Finding the kit, and then they found somewhere in China to actually produce the kits. Yeah, and the first shipment of them is due out this week. So I'm hoping tomorrow he's going to contact me. I'm going to give him all the shipping details, and it'll be on the way. And as far so as we to be know, clear, guys. That's that's all metal. <laughs> so, so you're just jealous of my CR. It took 45 minutes. Oh, I feel like you were talking about that for a lot longer than 45 minutes, Nonstick. Yeah. Like, that was a lot longer than that. Um, so it's all metal parts. 
it's almost an identical build volume to um to a CR30. I think you but, lose I mean we are talking you lose 20 mil. I think you lose 20 mil on the Z. Oh okay. Not the end of the world. Um but uh, but yeah, it's all metal, it's all machined aluminium parts. You try to reuse as much of the original machine, as much of the original ender as possible. I'm very, very interested to see how that performs. Um, you have a V2. Do you know, Carl, I don't think it will work with a V2. I don't know. I'd have to check and I'd have to ask, and we'll and definitely for, cover that as part of the stream. For those of, those of people who are pretty bored, they also do one for a Sidewinder. Yes. Are they actually doing that at the same time, or are they... It's, um... it's advertised on their site. My God. Okay, so then they're also doing one for a Sidewinder, so that would give you a, a large Z and um, a large X. Let's see if it tells you. So the uh, print volume is 300 by 245 by Infinite. Yeah, that's not small. That is not small. All right, guys and dolls. As I say, that's what's coming up on the. Sh that's what's coming up on the show. We're gonna have. We're gonna have a lot more stuff um, coming on the channel as well. We've got some more. Um, we've got some more videos in the works. We've got the Boron two point four review that's coming up. So that's going to be really big. Um, why can't I see the comments? I've no idea. Oh, because he's put the poll up. <laughs> yeah, Mike, you, you've hidden most of the comments because uh, you've put that, you've left that poll there. There you go. It's gone. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so the size, uh, sorry, what was the size on the, um, on the ender? So on the ender, it's... Um... 230 by 170 by infinite. So still pretty large. Now I see it. There we go. Uh, yeah. So anyway, guys, so thanks very much for joining. Uh, we will be having a stream later in the week once I've changed over this thermistor and put the new fans in. And that will hopefully be us printing with this at that point. Everything else, um, everything else works on this at the moment. So um, it homes, it moves and all of that good stuff. Uh, it does actually heat up. It just can't do it properly with the way that it is now. And, and, and. Oh, and we need two what? new fans. And we need two new fans, yeah. Um, so, right. So, anyway, let's just talk about, very quickly, the videos we've got coming up. So, we've got the Voron 2.4 video, um, and we've got the TCT show coming up. So, on the 28th, we will be going up to the TCT show, covering as much of that show as we possibly can going around and looking at all of the uh, different stalls, seeing what's out there, seeing what's new, doing some interviews. and all James, that will be, James will be man on the scene. I will be man on the scene, like Dennis Pennis. Yeah. I'm thinking of uh, I'm thinking of getting a cheap dollar store suit just it's to, uh, tight, just to go. <laughs> right, anyway, guys, thanks very much for joining us, and we will see you all very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.